What do you do when a normal car engine is not powerful enough for you? Well, if you reach for the skies, all of these classic cars here have got one thing in common, and that is they all have an aeroplane engine up front. This has been created by Ed China, and it's four of the finest aeroplane-powered cars that you can find. Here to tell us a little bit about this is Ed. Over to you, Ed. Well, thanks, Ollie. Yes, I'm here on my aero engine display. We've got four wonderful aero engine powered vehicles here. We've got a couple of GNs on the other side of the stand with different engines in them, which is rather exciting. So you imagine in the middle of the wars, we've actually got all these guys racing around with kind of normal cars, and they go, hang on, we can put aeroplane engines into those cars and go even faster. So we've got kind of a couple of cars over there. We've got about 100 odd horsepower, which is quite wonderful when you think the other cars around at the time would be about 20 horsepower. But these two bees here, we've got Babs and we've got Sid. This has got a head Spano Suiza engine in it, and it delivers about 600 horsepower, which is pretty epic. And obviously, the best way to race around places like Brooklands back in the day, and just really just go as fast as you possibly can. Now, obviously, on this particular car, it's actually, if you think about it, the engine's around the wrong way. Normally, the propeller would be about here, which would be quite dangerous for the driver, and of course, it would be cooled by radiators or cooling pins that would go down the side of the engine. In this case, we've got a small radiator at the front, which means you really want to keep this moving, a bit like a shark. Once it's running, you've just got to keep on going to keep it cool enough, but it is very, very fast, very, very hot, and very fantastically noisy. So on the stand here, we have a 1921 GM Parker that was originally fitted with an 1100cc Jap engine, also from an aeroplane, but then in the 70s, way, way later, it's been fitted with a six litre de Havilland engine, and it develops now on the right fuel about 170 horsepower. So you can imagine, you've got all that power in there, and you're strapped to basically a baked bean tin with a couple of wheels on it. It's insane. Now, Babs was originally created back in 1923 by Count Zabrowski, and this is the fourth of his Chitty Bang Bang cars, which of course is where the name for the very famous film movie car, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, originally came from. Now, this has got a wonderful beast of an engine, 27 litres, and it's now developing nearly 600 horsepower, and it is quite amazing. You can do 170 miles an hour, which is quite epic. And it is a wonderful, wonderful, smooth and sort of aero designed vehicle. It did have this very, very sad history because now it's back on the road or it's on the track. And it's a wonderful thing. Now here we have another GN. This one was also from 1921. Now when it came out of the factory, it had a V-twin, but this one has got a V8 Curtis aeroplane engine in it. Nine liters of awesomeness. And it's about 110 horsepower. I can do 120 miles an hour. Can you imagine that? And the seats are so tiny, I could probably fit a buttock in each one of them. It's kind of crazy, but a wonderful paint job. Often see it down at Goodwood. And the fact that you can see all the valves moving around just makes it a wonderful, wonderful, visceral thing to see. Now, as you can imagine, this classic car show has got all kinds of vehicles, something for everybody. And on the Grand Avenue, where you can actually see the cars go up and down on display, I've also got a 1918 Cadillac Type 57. It's a wonderful, wonderful car, but it's very, very important first. It's the first production V8. It's the first car to have all the controls inside the car in the order that we know them as today. It's also got the first car with an electric start. So it's actually quite a special vehicle. It'll be out on the track again today. And also, at the very far end of the hall, we've actually got Ian Callum's display. But next to that, we have my little electric ice cream van. It's the world's first all-electric ice cream van. It's there sitting there with my nice little sofa. And also on my stand, you can see an electric Fiat 500 and an electric Royal Enfield motorcycle, which you can see in the next video. And one last thing before you all rush off, you must buy my new book. Shameless plug here, but it's wonderful. Red available for pre-order right now, and it's gonna be amazing. So do please go and buy it, and then read it a little bit. Okay, everyone, thanks ever so much for watching. If you've enjoyed these videos, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, uh, and by clicking on the link below, and make sure to tick the bell as well. Okay, thanks everyone, see you again.